So we're just going to go with a cube, any size cube. It doesn't matter what way it's sitting. Right, and that's it. That's all we need. That's all our modeling done. It's taken care of. Um, so the option we need to go and date is a thing called the UV texture editor. So there's there's actually like three ways in it. I'm going to show you two ways. Uh, they're dead quick to get to. So when you're in the this little shelf here, the polygon shelf, it's this little option here. Okay, so UV texture editor. You click there, that opens it up. So that's one way in it. And this is just a floating window. So you can, whenever you're done with it, you just close it. It just hides it. Uh, the other way in, which I use more often, because sometimes the shelves aren't turned on, um, is you go to window and then just UV text around it. Okay, so that's just kind of your two ways in. They take you, you know, it's like Photoshop doing stuff, Photoshop, it takes you to the same place. Um, so what this is, this is Maya's way, when we made this object, Maya made like a little 2D map for it that it thought was right. Um, but you can see it's not. So if I go into face mode here, if I click on there, then I know when I take this into Photoshop, that there, part of the model, the texture is going to come from that part of the file. And then this part of the model, the texture will come from there, that side is going to come from there. Um, does anyone recognize like, an issue with it? <laughs> like, is something wrong between one and another? <coughs> yeah, so our, our front, say the front face of ours there, is quite a like tall rectangle. Over here, it's a cube. So what do you think might happen if I put a texture on it and then put it on? Ah, it would be stretched, yeah. So basically what it would do is take a square image and it would stretch it out. Um, so it looks a bit silly. So what we have to do is um, we just have to tell the model to re-UV itself, like unwrap itself again. Um, and the way you do it is you make sure this here says polygons um, or they'll drop them in. You just make sure you're in the right mode. And you just go to create UVs. Uh, and automatic mapping, okay? So what it does is, the best way for me to explain this is, when you do it, it's called projecting. So it's like a, just a physical big projector. So it's just projecting your texture from different angles. So when I go to, I'm in object mode, so it's gonna happen to the whole object. I go to create UVs, automatic mapping. What it does now, these little blue things that appear are the angles it's trying to project at. And it's figuring out which side works best. So if we go back in the, see the annoying thing is that forces you into face mode. If you come back in the object mode then, you can see now it makes a lot more sense. So now that shape there, actually we've done with that shape. Um, so what we're gonna do now is, we could export this out at the minute, but we wanna kinda tweak it a little bit more, okay? So when you're in this um, UV texture editor, you've got different select modes as well. So you can hold down your right click, you've got these different ones. Now a new one that they've added recently is shell. So if I click on there, when I click on a shell, it's like a whole side of an object. Okay, you can use your normal move, rotate, and scale here. So you can actually move these around the file. So all I'm gonna do is grab these ones. I'm gonna chuck them out of the way. Grab that one, I'm gonna chuck it away. And I only wanna look at this one. Okay, so that's like the front of my cereal box. So all I'm gonna do now is hold down my right click. I'm gonna go into edge mode. I'm gonna select this edge. And you can see, like, very faintly, that edge there is the same as that edge. Okay, so it makes sense for them to be kind of sitting beside each other in the file. So there's a little option here. It's, like, pretty hard to see. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in. And it's called the Move and Sew tool. So if I click on that, it moves the object and sews it to the other one. So if I move there, you can see now two of them sew together. And then I just do the same for the rest of my objects. So I grab this one, uh, go into edge mode, grab this side here, move and sew, and that moves it down. And then <coughs> if you imagine if this was a proper cardboard box, we flatten it out, this side here would be connected to the other side. So we go move and sew again. And then we just need to sew on our top and our bottom. Okay. So now what happens is that is all one massive shell, it's all attached. It's all, it moves together as one big chunk. So we can scale it so it fits in a little bit better. And all your same tools work like your zoom and stuff here. The only thing is you can't rotate because you're not in 3D. So now that's like sewed together quite nicely. So all we need to do now is get this out of here and into Photoshop. Uh, and the way you do it, make sure you're in object mode. This is a bit where Maya sometimes is a, a bit annoying because if you're not in object mode, it won't work. Uh, we just go polygons, 
So we're at our UV tax right? We go polygons. And we want to take a picture of it, just like a snapshot. So UV snapshot. And then these options are fairly important. So you guys know how to from Photoshop. Like the higher resolution, the better. Okay, so always change the size. Uh, and we want to go work on 1024 by 1024, like always square. Okay, um, so if I just click here and just change it to 1024 and then click on the next box, it ups it automatically for me. The main thing is where are you going to save it? So I'm going to save this just to the desktop. Um, but you guys save it in whatever folder you're working on. If I can see my desktop, there you go. Right. Um, once we give it a name, so we'll just call it UV underscore serial. And then the next thing is just what format you save it as. So JPEGs or PNGs for you guys in the perfect. Okay, so that's all we're going to save it as. Um, so if this one, I'll go for a JPEG. And then all I do is hit OK. Sometimes it takes a little while just because it's loading. You know if it works because Maya tells you down here. So it says it saved the file, and that's where it saved it there. So if I go to my uh, desktop, that's the file. All right. So now I know in Photoshop, I can open this up and I can start painting on it like normal. Okay, so if I was to open this in Photoshop, I'll just do a test so you can see how it goes on there. Um, and then what we're going to do is you guys are going to do this. Take your time with it, like follow the video step by step. Um, so that's just Photoshop. Uh, it's just a JPEG file. Now you can do whatever the hell, the hell you want with it. You can bring in, it's just a normal file. So you can bring in like photographs. You can make your own text. You can take it in the Illustrator. You can take stuff in from Illustrator. But what I like to do before I begin is um, I like to just check to see if it works properly. So that's why with the barrel example I showed you earlier on, um, I just like colored them roughly. Okay, so I do this number the one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna save this. Um, so when you guys are texturing, you should always have two versions. You should have like a PSD file, which is like your working document. So it's kind of like you're working for clients. You have like a, a PSD file that you work on, and then you always output a JPEG or a PNG that you're gonna give in the software, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this as a PNG. And uh, I'm going to apply it now in Maya. So the way we apply it is we close this down. We don't need it anymore. Um, make sure you're in object mode. Hold down your right click. And this is kind of like what we've done already. You go to assign new material. It asks you what you want. So this is very much dependent on whether you want it to be shiny or flat. So this will go with like Lambert, which will be kind of more flat. Um, instead of using the color, we're just going to go to this little option here where we can plug in a file. And we choose file off this list. And then here we just use the little browser. So a little browser up here, and then you can find the file wherever you saved it. So mine's just sitting on desktop. So that's it there. All right, and this is where everyone panics. Because it's it's applied okay, I can see it there, but it's not showing up properly. And the reason it's not showing up properly is we haven't turned on textured view. So textured view is six on your keyboard. So five is your shaded view. Six is your text review, and now you can see that it's working all right. Okay, so then anything what you do at this stage is you keep that open, keep Photoshop open, and you can keep making changes. And so, if I decided that I wanted to have um, and treat this like a normal document now, like a bar that ran across there, um, and I wanted to fill it with I don't know, like a serial of yellow, we'll go this disgusting green. There you go. Um, all I do is file. Save as, I overwrite my last one. Um, so I say this is PNG. So all I do is just overwrite that, and then you don't have to redo that thing again, because Maya's gonna remember. It's like it's pointing at the file, and Maya knows where the file lives, so provided you overwrite it, okay, all I do is come in here. If you can't see your little list that we were in before, if you right click on this little list here, there's your shader, and you can double click, and that'll force it to load back in again. So all you do is you go into Photoshop, you kind of make some changes, you come back into Maya, you double click, see how it looks, and you go back into Photoshop. So that's how you kind of end up getting like really nice models, because you should be jumping between, you don't want to work in Photoshop for six hours, and then put it on your model and realize that it just looks poop. You want to kind of do it like little steps at a time, all right? 
Um, so that's kind of that gets a quick, a real quick crash course in it. There's a long, there's a video of me doing the same thing on my YouTube channel. If anyone wants to follow that, I'll I'll save this video. I'll upload that as well. Um, but basically, what we wanted to get done by the end of today is we want to make our own little cereal box, and you can have.